Sensi, after it was purchased from Karen Collette, this is where Sensi was housed. Okay, so <laughs> let me give you a little bit of story about the farm itself. Um, you, most people are expecting a bigger farm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is the old farmhouse for this area, and uh, as the city built up around it, it ended up with uh, basically three acres around what's left of the farm. Um, Orville and two business partners that he had joined with purchased this property as an investment property. So they never, Orville had he never lived here, this was never a residence for them. They bought it as as an uh, investment with his partners because the city hadn't put over this overpass yet, but the plan was in the city plan. So they knew that when they put that in, they would buy an easement on the property to put the sidewalk all the way around the property, which was going to be a significant amount of money. So there was a good potential for making money on this property. So it was purchased, the house was leased out, and, uh, and then Orville moved his business, which at the time was called Event Sales, into these two, into this building here. Uh, Event Sales sold products at fairs and shows uh, all over the West. Did about $2 million in revenue a year. And that's why Sensi had such a, and has really, such a liberal fair and show policy. Not all direct selling companies do, or especially did uh, back at the time when Sensi started. So, um, so the partnership bought this property, and uh, and then they got into business together on event sales to help Orville restructure his debt. Because Orville had a lot of debt at that time, and that uh, went okay for a while. And then 9/11 hit, and I don't know how many of you remember or were even alive. I guess probably right. most. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the economy was hit hard, and the fair and show business was hit really hard over the next few years, and so. That uh, put a real strain on the partnership and on Orville financially, because again, most of the debt of the business was his. So the partnership broke up and uh, left Orville really in a situation where he was likely to declare bankruptcy. And that's the story, that's usually the beginning of the story that you hear is Orville and Heidi kind of in desperate situation, uh, $800,000 in debt. They didn't know what they were gonna do and likely going into bankruptcy. Remember, Heidi said, we're not going into bankruptcy. Because she didn't, why? Her name in the paper. So about a month uh, after the partnership broke up, Orville was down on a show in Utah and across the aisle from him, and by the way, he was selling uh, these little, well, no, at the time in his booth, them. he had a handheld, uh, like a little v game video controller game. that had a screen on it yeah. that he bought cheap from China. And he, <laughs> he, was trying to, he was trying to sell those, and across the aisle from him was Kara and Colette selling Sensi, the business that they had started. And Colette, whose two daughters are here, here in the group, right, really wanted one of those game controllers for one of the girls that's here, actually, or for both of them, probably. And so she went over to Orville and said, hey, I will trade you one of these warmers for the game controllers. And they started a discussion about what she was doing and how she was doing it. And Orville tried to help her out as best he could with uh, information about sourcing from China and things like that. Uh, so that, that went on for a while. And then it evolved into Kara and Colette deciding that since they were still stay-at-home moms and very much involved in that profession, that uh, it might not be a bad idea to sell Sensi to Orville and Heidi and let them realize its full potential. Because if you ever hear Colette talk about it, she always knew that it had huge potential. And Orville always knew it has huge potential. As soon as he found it, um, he knew that it was gonna be big. And when they offered to sell it to him, he was determined to buy it. And so he came back, not having any money of course, to one of the partners that he still had a good relationship with and said, if you help me buy this business, this is the business we've been looking for. This is going to be what we wanted to do. You know, we're going to we're going to realize our dreams through this business. If you help me purchase it, then I'll give you fifty percent of it. And that partner told him no at the time. <laughs> well, and then he got story at every show I see him at. I kicked myself in the butt today because I told Orville that would never happen. That's not going to work. That's not true because I was that partner. Oh, I thought it was. The other guy. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. No. Orville. Well, now I know the truth right now. <laughs> the only person that Orville offered 50% of the business to is me. Yeah, and he knew that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So did you keep yourself? Right, you well, um, <laughs> I'm a given now. now. I mean, I do, I, to, a, to a degree, but here's the thing: everything happens for a reason, right? Yeah. And true. Orville and Joel doesn't sound as good as Orville and I. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, that's true at many levels, right? The business yeah. needed Heidi, and uh, and uh, and so if I had been partners with Orville, there's a good chance that Heidi, knowing her personality, probably wouldn't have been a major part of it. Uh, so I think things happen for a reason. I wasn't ready to do it. I didn't see the vision that they saw until it was more established. And so I think it's I think it turned out. Yeah. Uh, so they they went down, they figured out that since I wasn't gonna help them buy it, they figured out another way to purchase it. Um, they went down uh, with some family help, bought the business from Karen Collette, loaded it into a trailer, which I think might be that trailer over on the end, but I'm not certain. Brought it back, there wasn't a lot of inventory, uh, and then moved all of uh, event sales inventory out of here and into the bottom half of this building over here and turn this into uh, warehousing, shipping, and even some manufacturing for Sensei. Some of the manufacturing was done in the other half of the bottom down there, and then the offices were upstairs. So technically, this is the first home office of Sensei, and this is the distribution center, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Now that you've seen what it had, what evolved into, uh, now you get to see what it started from. So there's a couple of fun stories uh, about this property. They were here for about nine months. There is no running water over here, only from a well that feeds the house, which again, they didn't have access to. So they had bottled water and porta potties that they brought in. Wow. That's how they lived. Uh, their kids were small. There's actually a picture of, of the family at the time that's still on Orville's desk. It was on Orville's desk in the beginning and still there. Um, and you can see how small they were, but many of them that weren't in school would just come and play on the farm. And Orville uh, the, from the time that we bought this property, Orville uh, had uh, animals on it. So from the very beginning, uh, sheep and, and and cows. And so you see that he still has, he still keeps animals on the property now. He loves them. Of course, he has a bigger farm. But um, yeah, they also had chickens here. And one of the fun stories that they tell is that Deanie Morehouse, who's one of the first consultants, used to come here and she hated chickens. She was definitely afraid of them, still is, I assume. And so she wouldn't get out of her car until somebody came out and could reassure her that there were no chickens around. And, uh, is she scared of peeps, too? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but Orville used to come out and gather up as many chickens as he could around her car just to freak her out. Um, there was no workstation. Uh, the catalog was a uh, three-ring binder with photocopies in it um, and so you have many things that they didn't have back there at the beginning uh, consultants would either fax the order in or they would bring it in here and when they were here they would often fill their own orders so they would cook that and, and carry it out and even order fulfill some of the other orders that had come in uh, there was only ever one paid employee that worked here and that was um, uh, oh shoot uh, Chris uh, Chris uh, gonna kill me with that one. Wolston. You know, she's a superstar director now. Christina Wolston, I think. Not, not Steve. No, no. Um, and, uh, but most of the labor in the beginning was donated. Obviously, Orville and Heidi weren't able to take any money from the business for three years. Uh, and uh, Heidi's parents, mother and stepfather, helped them for free for a long time off this property. So after eight months, they were able to move off into a small warehouse with a small office in the front. You've seen those they, all over the place. And then gradually moved into the spaces that, the space that they have now. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got involved, uh, Orville and I stay in contact periodically. And, uh, and when I would see him, I honestly thought he was going bankrupt. Which again is another reason why I didn't get involved. <laughs> and so when I would see him, he'd say, "Ah, oh, we're still doing okay. We're on the farm." I'm like, "Oh, great, Orville. Hope it all works out for you." <laughs> and then I'd see him again. He goes, "Hey, we moved out into this, you know, five thousand square foot space." And I'd be like, oh, "It's awesome, Orville. Hope it works out for you." <laughs> and then still thinking the dude's going out of business. <laughs> and then a few times of that. And then one time he came to me and said, "You know what? We just..." We just did $45 million last year. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so that was about the time I got involved with Sensi in, in uh, May of 2009. How'd that be? 
Morble and I, uh, we went to the same church. And we were we were both entrepreneurs along with our third partner, Ron Moser. Was it Ron? Oh, it Ron's the other guy that you're talking to? Oh yeah. So Ron, so that would probably like, we, we, although that's not a true story, Orba would have never offered Ron. <laughs> he never said 50%, he just said, Orville said, help me buy this business. This not to Ron, business. because Ron and him did not have a good relationship after the business program. So then he just has a story to tell. If it's the same guy, Ron Moser. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <laughs> he's vivid. <laughs> yeah. Orville would have never offered Ron. <laughs> but they've, they've made up, by the way, in case, because you know Ron, they've made up and now that friendship <laughs> is reestablished. But, uh, so what was I saying about Ron? No, you and Orville Oh, so, uh, Ron was also entrepreneurial, uh, to a degree. And so we were all kind of talking one day in church and we were like, we should do something together. And we had all read the book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. Some guys go fishing, other guys. <laughs> Rich Dad, Poor Dad is all about diversifying your income. You should have multiple sources of income. So we said, we should do that together. So that's why we invested in this property as a source of uh, income. So that's how we met. And uh, uh, it's kind of surreal now to be a part of it, but I'm grateful. It's been a fun ride. So. The, uh, the property's all set up like it was in the beginning. Now it's much cleaner and everything's painted. It used to be dirtier and farmier. Farmier. <laughs> <laughs> and there were trees and uh, weeds out there and everything. But, uh, but this is, we put this on the property for event sales inventory. Um, and it is, once they converted it to Sensi, it looked just like this. Everything in it is still the same. In fact, the bins where they keep the bars, you'll see them in a second. Uh, when, when Colette came through the tour last year, first time she's ever been to the farm. Um, I opened this up and she looked in and she said, those are my bins from my Aww. basement. Aww. So, she's like, yeah, can and I confirmed, that? I, confirmed that with, I confirmed that with her daughters earlier this afternoon. Uh, and it is her handwriting still on the, oh, wow. on the label. Wow. Yeah. Really awesome. so, uh, this is set up, that, that is also set up very similar. Like, I'll walk around so I can answer questions. Yeah. Again, the only difference is it's cleaner. Are we allowed to take pictures? Yes, absolutely. But I get this question every time. You can't have a catalog. Darn it. Uh -huh. Catalog. Oh, and it still smells. Lucky and yeah, it does. What's that one? Perfectly pomegranate. Have they got rid of it? Oh, that's that like. That don't make sense. Okay. We should have never gotten rid of that. Okay. Oh, and these are the bricks. Yeah, truffles. Look at those melted. The way scale. Ew, that smells awful. Melts yeah. in the oh, it does. Look at those. I wonder. Oh. room.